judgment. The Lord is bringing judgment. What I mean is the wickedness that has persisted. Do you know what is wickedness? You know, when you have not experienced wickedness, you will not understand what I'm saying. But there are certain people here, the Lord is ministering judgment to your condition. So, we are going to lift up our voice and pray prayer. Father, every act of wickedness around my life, around my family, that tonight, today is the second day of the month of February, that tonight, in the name of Jesus, let there be judgment. Every act, see, wickedness is an act. There are, there are perpetrators of wickedness. In one minute, Ecclesia, lift up your voice. Online, on come. Every act of wickedness. The Lord is bringing judgment. Yeshua. Namashia. Father, I bring judgment over every act of wickedness over and upon your people. Families represented here. Judgment. 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 Judgment to the acts of wickedness. You sleep, you see evil. Perpetrators of wickedness. They will not allow you rest. We bring judgment. We bring judgment. Every demonic condition, judgment. Every demonic affliction, judgment. Direct wickedness, judgment. Sitting over families, sitting over individuals, careers, judgment. Every act of wickedness around your life and around this ministry, in the name of Jesus, I pronounce judgment. Every act of wickedness tonight, be judged. I judge you in the name of Jesus. I judge every act of wickedness. I judge every act of wickedness. Surrounding your life, I judge every act of wickedness. Every act of wickedness. Listen to me. Break it down. When I say act of wickedness, I'm not talking about the ones you rebelliously entered. I'm saying somebody just sits down and sends something to you. I'm talking about people sleeping and noticing that certain things are happening in their dreams. People waking up with scars. And there are people with physical manifestation. Those things are acts of wickedness. While we were chanting, I was hearing, declare judgment. You know what? He says, Every act of wickedness in and around your life, surrounding your situation, tonight I bring judgment on them. I bring judgment on them. Every act of wickedness goes down now in the name of Jesus. Every altar that sponsors such an act in the name of Jesus by, the, by a greater altar I decree and I declare judgment upon them now in the name of Jesus ah, manipulative dreams dreams that result in physical manifestation I decree in the name of Jesus anything that looks like an act of wickedness in and around your life that actually bears cars tonight is an end of it in the name of Jesus I curse it to its root in the name of Jesus. Commenting things. Evil all around. I curse it in the name of Jesus. Every fig tree around your life. Every fig tree around what you do. Everything bearing fruits that is not consistent to the character and the nature of God in your life and in your family. I curse it tonight in the name of Jesus. Let there be judgment now in the name of Jesus. I break the power of witchcraft now in the name of Jesus.
Seigneur, allow me break the power of witchcraft. Allow me break the power of witchcraft. Ah, anyone under spells and enchantments, allow me break the power of witchcraft. Holy Spirit of God. Precious Holy Spirit. Maranatha. Whoever is under the power of witchcraft, I stretch my hands. And I decree now, in the name of Jesus, that power is broken. That power is broken. That power is broken. That power is broken. I would have loved to minister, but let's teach. Father, tonight, breathe upon your word. Do what only you can do. Holy Spirit of God, take over. I hide behind the cross. Edify your church and equip us again. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please jam your hands together for Jesus as you take your seat. Hallelujah. Welcome somebody to your left and right and say you're welcome. This is Ecclesia. Praise the Lord. I say, welcome somebody, say you're welcome. Well, I, I'm seeing um, the FCS, yes, God bless you, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I can't remember the name, <laughs> but uh, I will get that done proper in Jesus' name. Now, um, praise the Lord. Um, this is the second service for the year, the year of his fullness. The year of his fullness. Um, we started something last week, the fullness of God. And last week or, or on Sunday service was more of an high octave. I was just wanting to bring the counsel of God, so I needed to ascend very well. So what I came here to do tonight is to guide us. I want us to be voracious with the word because we are going to be opening scriptures as the Lord will help us. So, the fullness of God, part two. But now, before I begin, there are three basic understanding you are going to get if you follow this teaching. There are three basic understanding you are going to get if you follow this teaching. The first, first understanding that you are going to get is that if we are joining into the fullness, the first understanding that should actually come to you is the fact that man is the habitation of God. If after this series it is not a conviction in your heart and I'm going to guide you in scriptures and you are going to see what I'm saying. Man is the habitation of God. That means man is the house of God. Man is the dwelling place of God. It means that as you are seated here now, God doesn't have a house outside of you. Man is the dwelling place of God. That's the first understanding that the fullness will furnish to you. The second understanding that the fullness will furnish to you. After it has furnished that man is the house of God, is the posture you must assume in order to walk in the fullness. And most of these things, I said them prophetically on Sunday. The posture you must assume in order to walk in the fullness. I said first, the first understanding this teaching will do is that it will bring you to the awareness, the knowing that man is the house, the tabernacle, the habitat of God. The second is that there is a posture you must assume. If not, the fullness will become a cliche. You know, there are many of you, you know those scriptures that say, well, God dwells in me. You know the scripture in 1 Corinthians 3, 
16 and 17 where he tells you that you are the temple the dwelling place the tabernacle of god but how come your life is not an experience of it the reason is because there is a posture to assume after knowing that man is the dwelling place of god there is a posture you must now assume that the thought is the technology for walking in the fullness there is how to walk in the fullness i said the first is that there is an understanding of the fact that man is the house of god the tabernacle of god and the second is that there is a posture you and i must assume in order to walk experientially in the fullness and the third is that there is now how to walk in the fullness of god that is the technology of god now let's go back to the first man the habitat of god Now, for you to understand the fact that man is the habitat of God, we need to revisit the design. When, you know, there's something in theology called the law of first mention. And what they teach us there is that if you want to study about any subject in scripture, go back to where it was first mentioned. Like, if you have a Bible that has searches, if you want to study about anything and you want to know the true concept and meaning, because scriptures... The scripture can be prophetic sometimes. Sometimes you can read a particular word in one verse and it will be saying a different thing. So they are trying to tell you that in case you want to get the true concept, the true meaning of any word or anything you want to study in scripture, look for it where it was first mentioned. So if you have a search Bible, if you type man, the first time man was mentioned was in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And when you visit it, one of the things you will see is what God had in mind when he wanted to create man. He said, let us make man in our own image. After our likeness. That means when you look at the design of man, what God actually did there was that God hid himself in dust. That means you that you are seated here, it is actually God hiding himself in you. Because man was not given an original image of himself. So if I look at Brother Matthew, Brother Matthew is not Brother Matthew. That is the very reason why you don't even know the day you were born. Because somebody had to tell you that you were born 2nd of September. You yourself, you don't know the day you were born. Because you were never given an image of yourself. Your mother had to tell you that, ah, it was 2 a.m. that they gave birth to Mary. So you don't even know. That means, you know, if you don't understand this, you will, you, you will become like the scientist. Science don't know that what they are standing on is false. Because it was scripture that was teaching us that you existed before you started living. Because when the mothers came to meet Jeremiah, they said, hey, before your mother met your father, we knew you now. I don't understand. That means, you know some of you now have a relationship. Before that day that your father did all his style and scope to scope your mother, you, are, you were existing in the realms of the mothers. But what God did is that he made sure you don't remember that day. Because when he was creating you, how he created you is that he made sure that it was himself that was existing in you. So he says that before you were formed in your mother's womb, we knew you. And before we now called you out of the womb of your mother, we gave a separation on you. That is the very reason why if your birthday is 5th of March, you don't know it. So they could have lied to you and tell you that, well, we gave birth to you in March. And that's why some people just choose birthday. I'm trying to tell you that when you look at the original design of man, what you are manifesting is not Jimo. What you are supposed to manifest is not even yourself. Because when God wanted to create you, what he did was that he hid himself in you. Because he never gave you an image of yourself. What he did was that he, 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 he looked at me and said, okay, I want to mass produce myself. So what he did was that he now took dust and he was putting himself in dust. So when you are to look at man in man's original essence, if the fall had not had happened, it would be God in the earth. Because he said, let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness, let's make him. Now look at some other scriptures. For example, in John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 5, the Bible begins to teach you something. You know, this was a citation, a manifesto that was being read. And they were reading it about a being. And in verse 1 it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now notice that this word is God. 
Now, he was in the beginning with God. And verse 3 now said, by him all things were made. And without him was not anything made that was made. That means even the plastic chair you are sitting on was made by this being. And without, he said in him was life. And that life was the light of men. That means what gave men essence and meaning in life is him. And the light now shines in darkness. And darkness could not comprehend the body. Where I'm going is verse 14. The Bible says in verse 14 that the word became flesh and did what so you now notice that when you now check the original design it is actually god because in the beginning was what the word and the word was what god now he says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made that means it was god dwelling hiding himself in flesh just the way in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 god was trying to hide himself in you it was because of the fall then he now had to come in christ and hid himself again that's why i told you that the first understanding that the fullness must give you is that man is the habitation of god so what i'm trying to say is this you are the house of god ha! the house of god is not living faith the house of god is you that the house of god is not your orthodox church the house of god is you and i want to show you some things hmm. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 I have plenty of readings to do In Philippians 2 5 The Bible says Let this mind be in you Which was also in Christ Jesus He says Verse 6 please Who being in the form of God Did not consider it Because you are God So he said Let this same mind You are in the form of God You are a God that man is the habitation of God. Man is the dwelling place, the house of God. Just the way you have a house in Madera, God has a house in Sokoto, and that house is you. Now, now begin to understand why Jesus said, You are you, you are the light. Because the Bible says God is light. And because He is dwelling in you, you are now the light of the world. Because man is the so he said, You were. Or oh, this being is in the form of God, but he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. In verse 7, he now says, He took the form of a servant. Who is on this projector, please? Fred, climb there. I have plenty of things to do. He made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient. To the point of death, even the death of the cross. Now, because of my time, if you read Hebrews chapter 2, 10 to 18, you still find the same thing. That Jesus came, look at, let's look, start from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 14. In as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself, God, likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. Verse 15. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Verse 16. For indeed he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. Verse 17. Therefore, in all things he had to be made my God, like his brethren. And he, see, we are the house of God. Can you say this with me? I am the house of God. Say, God lives in me. If this understanding doesn't down on you, the fullness is useless. That first of all, the first thing you must come into realization is the fact that Jimo, you are not Jimo. He's actually a house. If they ask, what is man? Man is the house of God. Just the way you have a house, you know, the port. God has a house. And that house is you. What I'm trying to tell you is this. If you are not aware of this fact, ah, Satan will so molest your life. Do you know what it means for you to be a house where God dwells? You know, one beautiful thing about this kind of things that we share, it says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge. It's called epignosis. There is a kind of knowledge that if you don't have, Satan will so deal with you. You know, the reason why people are suffering what they are suffering is because they have not come to a realization that when you show up, it's actually God that shows up. Because when God wanted to create you, what he did was that he hid himself in you. So man is the house of God. And you follow me please. 
You are going to see something. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 26 and 27, it says the mystery that was hidden for ages and for generations has now been manifested to the saints. They now asked him what is the mystery. He said Christ in you. So what God was trying to do was to see how he can hide himself in man. Now when John was now speaking in 1 John chapter 4 verse 4, he said you have got little children and have overcome them. They now say why? He said because greater is he who is in you. Can you say I'm the house of God? Please say, I am the house of God. I refuse to be molested. I am the house of God. Follow me. It was because of the fall. After the fall, God now appeared to Moses. Look at what God had to say. In Exodus chapter 25, 8 and 9. I'm guiding us. Exodus 25, 8 and 9. We are going to read a lot of scripture. Can we read this together? One, two, go. Now, after man fell, God departed. You know, he says, my spirit shall no longer dwell with man or strive with man. Now, when God now came, after he had delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, he now came to Moses and said, there is something I have in mind when I was trying to treat man. And that thing was how I can dwell in the midst of men. Now, media, there is a picture you are going to display later. And please, I want that picture to be ready. He says, and let them make me a sanctuary. Why? That I may dwell among. Say, God is in my house. Your presence means God there. Hey, see, it is this kind of knowledge that when I have it, and I have some kinds of dreams, I laugh. There was one day I was inside, and another dream, I saw somebody. He came with arrow. I wanted to fire me. So he was not doing like this. Was doing like this, was doing like this. So instead of me to not be afraid, and I ask myself, how did you manage to pass the angels? You now came to meet God where God is sitting. You now want to release an arrow. Now you see, if somebody says, say, Oh God, Holy Ghost fire. Hey, those who observe lying vanities, they forsake their own mercy. There are higher lights. You see, one of the things Satan hates, Satan is a proud being. He's proud. He hates the fact that you know a truth and you now hear him. When you hear him, he will leave you and never because they are proud beings. But it's simply because you are observing lying vanities. That's why you don't understand what it means to be the house of God. Do you know what it means? You are there was a scripture in second in first Corinthians 3 17. It says, Anything that defies my temple, I will destroy it. That's First Corinthians three seventeen. It says, "Anything that defies my temple, I'm going to destroy it." He came to Moses and said something. He said, "I want to dwell among my people." <laughs> Look at something in First Chronicles chapter seventeen one to five. First Chronicles seventeen one to five. Look at this, please. Now it came to pass when David was dwelling in his house that David said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in the house of Cedar, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord is still under tents, curtains. Then Nathan said to David, Do all that is in your heart, for God is with you. <laughs> but it happened that that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, Verse 4, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, You shall not bid me a house to dwell in. Ah! Now I understand when the Bible says the law was a shadow of the good things to come. He says, you don't have the capacity to build me a house, even if I'm looking for a house, but not that kind of house. For I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought up Israel, even to this day, but have gone from ten to ten. Now you see, as of that time, what God was doing is that God was dwelling in tents. So David now came up with the idea, that's why you have torches, that instead of putting God in a tent, let's erect blocks. And let's see how we can hide God in blocks. And God now said, see, I, I, I don't want to hide in blocks. There is something greater. It's men I'm looking for that I can dwell in. I'm looking for the likes of James Brisker and the rest that I can live in. Because the true house of God is not your church in Old Airport. The true house of God is the man living in Mabera. That man in a one bedroom flat. That is where God, ah, that means the, oh, he said the creation of the ends of the earth. I wish believers can understand this. When you enter the lecture hall, how can I cheat? How can, how can God cheat? You 
see, oh the Holy Spirit of God. How can God copy your answer? Imagine you found God, and God was like, Where did you get from number one? Hey, God. There is a kind of knowledge. No wonder Paul, when he was teaching in First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, he said, Do you not know? Hey, believers don't know. He said, Do you not know? If the word is I do, it's as though you don't know. That is why Mary is behaving weak. Because there is something she don't she knows one plus one, but there is something she doesn't know. She doesn't know that she is the house of God. So the next time you see Satan trying to manipulate or do something to you, you just laugh. You know why you are laughing? He that sits in the heaven shall laugh. You you know who is God, and God was not looking for tents to dwell in. He told Moses or David, he said, You I have dwelt in tent for many years. I know you are you you are wanting to be creative, but guy is not it's not a block. I need now. Let me show you something. When David, okay, Acts chapter 7, verse 48 to 50. Acts 7, 48 to 50. Look at however, the most high does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet says. He says, Heaven is my throne, the earth is my foot. So, what house will you build for me? Says the Lord. Or what is the place of my rest? <laughs> Has my hand not he says, You see, you are trying to build a house for me, but I can't dwell in blocks. We thank God for different kinds of cathedrals. We celebrate 150,000 cathedrals. Now they are building many thousand, but beyond that, ah, there is a place that can contain God. Even if you build a one million stadium, it cannot contain God because the Bible says God has set eternity in our hearts. I wish you understand that you are not just ordinary, you are the house, the dwelling place, the tabernacle of God. How can you fail when anytime you, anywhere you go to, what is going there is that you are carrying God. Ah, you know, people say problems weigh them down. You don't understand. You, you carry God. God in his totality. That's what the ministry of the fullness is. When we begin, didn't you read the scripture read in Colossians chapter 1 verse 19? He says, it pleased the Father. Ah, that in him all fullness dwells. And he was not trying to teach you this in Colossians 2 verse 9. He says that in him the fullness of the Godhead dwelleth bodily. You know what I'm trying to say? Stephen! What you are carrying is not just you. You know, many of you, you think it's organs that are in your body. You know, when you, some of you even, you go to a way, you now stay on the way and say, I weigh 75. Hey, you weigh 75. Don't be deceived by biology. You, do you know your weight? Do you know your weight? Do you know your weight? You are a carrier. I, I, I have a friend. He had a ministry those days in school. He called the name God Carriers. That means, what, what I'm trying to talk about is that, brothers and sisters, we are carriers of God. We are the house of God. Now, follow me. You are going to see something special. Ah! In Acts chapter 17, verse 24, look at what the Bible says. Acts 17, 24. It says, God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. So where do you dwell? <laughs> Look at, let me show you, give me that picture. That's why, to show you how God was, when he started with the Moses, what he was trying to do, because the Lord was a shadow, he told the tribes, the twelve tribes, they would camp in different ways. Hi, this projector. But you know where the temple was put? Where God was is in their middle. So if you look at this picture where, you will notice that the temple was in the middle and all the other tribes, they camped separately. I'm trying to tell you that, it was a shadow of the good things to come. So, right from that time, God was trying to tell them that I am not wanting to dwell in temple. A day is coming whereby I will leave this temple. I want to stay in the heart of Jimo. That is the only place that can contain me. I want to live inside of you. Ha! You know, when you begin to understand this, it will regulate how you talk. Imagine if you knew that your words were spirit and life. You will not tell somebody Shege again. Because you know telling him Shege can destroy him. I, you see, there was a day I was sharing with the workers. My guys were talking something that was so funny. I wanted to add, if I had said what I wanted, everybody would laugh. And I just said, keep quiet. Hey, the reason why he told me keep quiet, he said, you are a carrier of God. Don't talk anyhow. You know, many of you, you talk mumu shege anyhow. It's simply because you don't understand that you are a carrier. You, you are, God is exuding through you. You don't understand that man is the actual tabernacle of God. Because from ages past, God was dwelling in temples many years. And when the, the, the age continued, David and the rest now said, oh, let us build the God of the house. When Solomon came, let me show you something. Look at what Solomon said. 
In 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 27, Solomon had finished building the temple. Look at what he said. <laughs> 1 Kings 8, 27. A mighty temple. He says, but will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heavens of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built. After he finished building the temple, Solomon now confessed and said, Kai, you, you needed to go and study how that temple was built. It was from there you got that scripture that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Because after the temple was built, was destroyed, they came and built another temple. It was not as great as what Solomon built. And yet, when Solomon finished it, he said, Kai, God cannot dwell here. It was, you know, ah, we spent billions of dollars in erecting structures, which is fine. We are going to build us as God gives us strength. But I'm trying to tell you that beyond those structures, I wish you knew that you are the house of God. The next time you will clean your suit very well. You will not dress anyhow. You, do you know what it means? You are a carrier of God. There's a way you will carry yourself. You see, there is, there is, there is a kind of knowledge. It, that, well, Jesus, there is something it will do to you that how can you not have low self-esteem? How? <laughs> it's because you think that you are from Mother ID. It's because you think that you are from Old Airport. It's simply because you think that you are from Zimbabwe or Kenya. You don't know that when you gave your heart to Jesus, ah, he had set eternity in your heart. Man is the tabernacle of God. Man is not ordinary. It was Jesus that came to give us this pattern. Because Jesus is a pattern man. It was Jesus that told us something in John chapter 5 verse 26. Look at what Jesus said. Jesus said, as the father. Hey, what are you saying? I love this scripture so much that sometimes when I read it, I, I begin to think that means God in his totality, in all of his dimensions. He says, as the father has life in himself, so also has he given the son to have life. That means they were so equal. Then, if you now read 1 John chapter 5 from verse 11, ha, John was now writing. He now said, This is the testimony ha, that God has given us eternal life. He now said, The location of that life is in the Son. John now added in 12, He said, He that has the Son has life. He that hath not the Son does not have life. In 13, He now said, I write these things unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God so that you can know that you have eternal life. Ha, that means what you received when you gave your heart to Jesus was that God came to dwell in you. It means that you are the house. So what you are carrying? Huh? Do you know that scripture? That, that, that song that I said, this life that I have is a life <laughs> that I have is a life They now ask him, what is the name? Zoe. Zoe is not biology. Una gamanda singa lanta fala kamasta. Zoe. Alia konge zena taneba. Zoe. You see, on Sunday I told you that every part, you see, the way God created you, He was not just trying to be creative. Every part in your body represented the dimension of Himself in the glory. So the reason why God gave you His hands is simply because the power of God is in His hands. So that's why I told you that you will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Because the hiding place of his power is in his hands. That's why I said, I would uphold you with my righteous right hand. And the reason why God gave you a face is simply because the face of God represents government. So if you look at me, when I'm angry, you will know. When I'm happy, you will know. Because my face depicts government. The reason why God gave you feet is simply because he said, any place the soles of your feet are tread upon. So his feet represent his reign. That's why I said, he is a put his enemy under your feet. So don't just think that God was trying to be creative when he was creating you. The reason why men, they grow white hair when they get old is simply because God, it, it signifies that God is pure and it signifies it, his agelessness. That's why the Bible says the glory of old men is a gray hair. So God was not trying to cre be creative when he gave you two hands. It was simply because what God was trying to do was that God was hiding himself inside of you. So as I speak to you now, in the Godhead, there is a man. That's why Jesus resurrected with his bodily form. A man now is the father, the man, he go that. That's why they call him. Hey, He says there is only one mediator between God and man. Then I said, what is the mediator? He says the man, Christ Jesus. So there is a man. Jesus didn't come as the son of God. He came as the son of man. 
Because he had to strip himself of his glory. That's why the Bible says he took the form of himself. How can I be defeated? How? How? When I'm a carrier, a carrier, it, that means, ah, now I understand what the Bible began to teach when he says that. You see, in him, all the fullness dwells. If believers understand how to spend time in meditation and they allow their minds to be renewed, you know, they not carry the consciousness because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you allow that consciousness to so permeate you, ah, the supernatural will be so natural. It's simply because every day you stay on Telemundo for four hours. Then you want to do 30 minutes with the Bible. How can you live a victorious life? When the Bible says the wind blows where it wishes. We hear the sound of it, but we can't tell where it's coming from or where it's going to. He says, that is how it is for those that are born of the Spirit. He says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Somehow, we are carriers of God. We are the tabernacle of God. It means that what God was trying to do with Moses when he started in Exodus, how that he said, give me a temple. I want to dwell among my people. It was not enough. Solomon came and built something great, gigantic. Today we celebrate big cathedrals, but it's still not enough. Because what God is looking for is how he can hide a man. Because the original design of man is that let us make man and hide him in. That means when you see men on the scene, people who are giving their hearts to Jesus Christ, what you are supposed to see is that it is God ah, manifesting himself. How can such a man be defeated? It is this kind of army that God is about to raise. You will find them in the banking center. You will find them as businessmen. You will find them as ministers. You know, we have a lot of people that are apostles, pastors, and teachers. But all they carry is the knowledge they learned in theology. They are not manifestors of God. The first understanding you must encounter in the journey of the fullness is that you are not ordinary. You are the house, the tabernacle, the, the, the temple, the dwelling place of God. How can you be defeated? Ah. The next time they diagnose you of a sickness, laugh. Hey. Believers, you need to know these things. You see, the reason why it's not working is because you don't know it as your name. There is a way you will meditate. When you meditate, you come out like Moses. You won't know what has happened to you. When people look at you, the Bible says he didn't know that his face was shining because we are with open faces beholding us in the mirror. There is something that happens to us. Don't worry, I'm going to get there. It's in the realm of the presence where man is dancing God. Ah, you see, my greatest occupation in life this day is how I can stay with God. That is why there is a particular time I off my phone. All I do those time is that I am journeying. I am beholding. There, see, there is a lot of distraction in this world. Your friend is trying to call you. People are calling you from America, Zimbabwe, looking for counsel. The reason why you can give them counsel is because you are downloading measures of God. Because the world is not looking for another Joshua Anthony. What the world is looking for is a Joshua Anthony that carries God. Because it is only God that is the answer to the cry of our world. So, I want to ask you because time is actually the measurement of life. How what is the bulk of your time? Where do you spend most of your time in? Let me tell you, anywhere you spend your time in, your life you are spending it there. So a man who knows how to preach his dead, he's tied with cords to the horns of the altar. That man, after some time, ah, when you come and check another, it may take time, but that's why I said we all come because it's a journey. So if you start last month, don't stop. There is a place we will get to. He calls it the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. He says it is the perfect man. Because this kind of men we have on the scene, even if their name is Elizabeth, Esther, Timothy, Elijah, we look at them and we notice that they are not like Elijah. The last time I checked a man called Moses, the Bible says he was 120 years and his eyes had not abated. His strength had not... Hey, you know, today I was trying to think, if I get to 100 years, how will my body look like? Hey, it's simply because we have not entered. We, there is, oh God, there is, there is a church. There is a glorious church. And that church is you. <laughs> See? I wish believers understand. You know, the Lord told me that your mission is to apprehend and manifest my fullness. Because even if the Bible was teaching you something, in Matthew chapter 4, in 23, he says that Jesus went about all Galilee. He was preaching or teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, 
healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Then in Matthew chapter 9 verse 35, he says Jesus went about all their cities and all their villages. He was still doing the same. He was teaching in their synagogues. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He was healing every kind of sickness and every kind of disease. Yet, the greatest manifestation of Jesus was not in his ability to raise Lazarus from the dead. The greatest manifestation of Jesus was in his ability to contain and host God in his totality. So, the Bible now says it pleased the Father. You know that day that God sounded a, a sound from heaven. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased with. When Paul came to interpret it, he says, what God was trying to say is this. Ah, for the first time, I have found a house. Now I understand what Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 5 means. He says, it been burnt offerings you don't delight. He said, a body. Ah, therefore, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice an offering you did not desire, but a body. <laughs> Sir, you are the house of God. He said, a body you are prepared for me. Ah, 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 ah. How can you be defeated? You know why you are defeated? You don't, he said, they know not. Never do. So they don't know. It's not cognitive. Oh, there is a kind of knowing. It's idle first. Then you enter epignosis. Then you enter ginosko. Ah, it, it's a journey. He said, that's why he says, to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge. The knowledge is, is, oh, you know why? If I marry a wife now, I know her. But when I journey with her, that's why the Bible now says, and Adam knew his wife. When I know her more, now it's called, at first, it's idol when I marry her. When I now know her, it's called a big gnosis. That means I am not having an experience with my wife. Then when we now give birth to children, it's called ginosko. My experience has now begun to bear children. That's what Jesus means when he says that you should bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. Then he now said, you shall ask what you will. I wish believers know this truth. That there is a journey in light. In light. And what we are trying to do in this business of the fullness is that till we all come. I pity those who miss fellowships. I, oh God. I did, no, you see? Oh, 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 oh. Then, see? Ha! Sometimes when I study like this, I get so intoxicated. I, I see you don't I, I don't know what makes you laugh. Hey, hey, have you have you ever been studying and you were carried into realms? Ah, have you ever been studying and you enter the world of no limitation? Have you ever been studied? And what happened is that the scrolls of your ordination was open, the thesis of eternity was being read to you. When you come out of that kind of encounter, you will lose taste of life. You will not understand what I meant pursuing. Somebody buys a black jeep and he's so happy. Somebody walks all his life with civil servant and they pay him four million naira. He goes and buys the land. That is all he lived for. That same house, if he's alive in the next 30 years, if they dash him that house, he will not want it. The only thing he will need is the land. Somebody buys a car during the days of Mesdi's 199, now if they give you Mesdi's 190, you will sell it. And yet a man lives all his life, gather saving. That's all he has. Whereas there are others. What they are doing is that they are joining into dimensions. Ha! Ha! You don't know what order you are. That's why Jesus looked at, oh God. See, I was trying to be careful. I didn't want to ascend. <laughs> but sometimes it's a body, you cannot help it. I want to guide us. Because I have noticed that sometimes it's not by teaching. Now, if I teach keep teaching like this, I will bring you into a reality part time. But when a man is guided, that's what it means. He says, lines upon lines, precept upon precept. There is a teaching and opening of the word. So, like the Thessalonians or the, 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 the Christians that were more noble than the Berians, the Bible says they went home to search the scripture to see and find out if what Paul was teaching, whether it was so or not. Let's look at some scripture. Unahana me, Abadina mo, Shomonigane, Yanandabe, Abatanima, Samina Namagaguname, Iyane, Aminandam Fab, Adinini Mandan, Tegenan Zanzade, Yela. Look at First Corinthians chapter three, sixteen to seventeen. We are going to read this together. 
<laughs> Can we get it together? I want to go. <laughs> Tell somebody it's like you don't know. I'm th- no, you don't. You see, that's your problem. You read the Bible religiously. When the Bible says, when the Spirit is saying, do you not know? And he's putting a question mark. Brother, calm down. That Spirit is wise. And he says, Elijah don't know. Elijah thinks he knows. Because what Elijah has is gnosis, scientific knowledge. There is a knowledge beyond gnosis. That one is idol. And from idol, you journey into epignosis. From epignosis, you journey into gnosko. So what you are having is information. It's, info, it's still an information in your head. That's why in Philemon 1 6, it says that the, the, that, that, that the communication of our faith may become effective through the acknowledging. It's, the word is a big, there is a kind of knowledge. So when Paul was speaking by the Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 16, the first thing he says, Oh, do you not know? Jim, you don't know. So your prayer tonight is that, Oh God, make me know. That's why Paul began to pray for the church in Ephesus. He says, Lord, Give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. He says, the eyes of their understanding being enlightened, so that they will know the hope to which you have called them, the riches of the glory of your inheritance in them as saints. Let them know the exceeding greatness of your power that you have made available unto them as believers. He says, that power is like the working of your mighty strength that you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead and made him to sit at your own right hand far above all principalities and powers. You see, sometimes when I quote this scripture, it's intoxicating. Do you know where you are seated in? Then how come they call your name in one village cry and you, you not appear? If you appear, fire should burn that water. Because there's someone, they, they, you don't, it's simply because even the person who is seated with Christ doesn't know. Okay. So in 1 Corinthians 3, it says, do you not know? Can we get this together? Do you not know that what? <laughs> Tell somebody, brother. <laughs> you see, you see the way I want to say, say brother. Oh boy, now you be the house of God. Kai, that alone should. He did make my belly sweet. He did make my belly sweet. You know, he, see, that God is not dwelling in, in the. You know, now they say the biggest church in the world. They say the biggest cathedral in the world is not the one in Abuja, it's not Glory too. The biggest church is you. Because you are the only one that can contain God. The reason why that is a church is because all of us with God will now show up inside. If we don't enter that biggest church that they say is biggest church, it's a waste. It will become another club. The reason why is simply because when Dr. Paul stands there, he stands there with the fullness of God. And when the choir are singing, it's God. So, what God is trying to do, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, ah! Now I understand when the Bible says in him was life and that life is the light of men. That means we are the one that gives meaning to anything. If I touch this thing, the reason why this speaker will keep having meaning is because I'm using it. He says, do you not know? That you are... Go back, First Corinthians chapter 3. He says, do you not know? <laughs> the way spirits talk. That you are the temple of God and what dwells in you? You know, many of you, it's Dankeli. It's Dankeli. So old. Amasa. The white A. That is the thing that dwells in you. You are so conscious of that. Where who carry my food now? And that is the person he came with God, but he didn't know. Who carried my food? All he's trying to do is how he can bombard himself with things. He doesn't know that there is eternity in his heart. Okay. He now says, if anyone defies the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are? Hey, in First Corinthians chapter 6, 19 to 20. Look at how he says. First Corinthians, he says, Hey God, oh, do you know this is not where I wanted to start? He says, Or oh, do you not know? <laughs> hey, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know. Tell somebody you don't know. <laughs> Scripture is telling you that though you don't know, you don't know. Brother, you don't know. He said, Oh, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have from God, you are not your own. In verse 20, for you were bought with the price. Do you now understand what Peter was trying to see when he said, You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, 
He says, a dedicated nation. He says, God's own purchased special people. He says, to set forth his wonderful deeds. Display the virtues. And I... That you may proclaim. Oh, he says, a holy... I'm, I'm actually quoting the Amplified. But let's leave that. Second Corinthians 6.16. <laughs> Second Corinthians 6.16. Let's sing this song. This life that I have is the life I stay. Oh, this life that I have is the life. Wait, there's a song you sang on Sunday. What's that song again? I want you. No, 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 no. The first one you sang. I can't, I carry you. Yeah, that's the good step. Everywhere I go. Yes, I, I, that song was singing in my heart. Everywhere I go, I carry you. I carry you. I carry you. Everywhere I go. That you are coming with God, and when you enter your house, Satan, you must check out. I'm a carrier. I'm a carrier. When you when you show up, see, I will teach you something about consciousness. There is something about consciousness that believers don't know. I heard a great man of God said something. He said, "Truly, a believer should not die." In First Timothy, Second Timothy one ten. Let's read it. And let me explain what he meant. And Second Timothy one ten. But has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has what? And what has it brought? Life and to light. How? What has it brought? Life and what? Now look at this. Life and immortality is already available. But now the man of God now said that because. The believer who gave his heart to Jesus Christ has been sick like seven times. And that believer has been hospitalized. He already has a knowledge. So now, if you start telling him that he cannot die, that experience of going to the hospital will keep fighting it. So, and as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So he now said, there is a body of Christ that will come that will enter this truth because no, all scripture will be fulfilled. And if you cut a baby now that doesn't have any knowledge and you start indoctrinating him into what the Bible teaches, I'm telling you nothing but the truth, that baby will be immortal. I know you will not believe. So, this is what the man of God now said. He says, if believers would truly catch up, they should spend minimum eight hours meditating on scriptures. And can I be honest with you? I lie not between God and mine. The secret to Christianity is meditation. Believers don't know this thing. Believers pray, but few meditate. The secret to invincibility is meditation. When Joel, okay, don't worry, that's not where I'm going to. But if you can master the act of meditation, you see, when we begin to deal with the different governments, now what life comes to do is modification. And it's, okay, let me not move into. <laughs> Those things now. Let me let me follow my chart. Second Corinthians 6 is in. Let me follow my chart. Oh, I carry you. I carry you. You know, there's a way you can play a song. You know, <laughs> let's read this. Let's read this, please. I, I'm, I'm far behind time. Let's read this. One to go. And what agreement has what? The temple of God. With idols. For who is the temple of God? Did you notice he said you are the temple of what? The living God. 
as God has said, I will dwell where? Everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. I carry you. But I can't go into the you know, I told you that the first understanding we must have when we begin to deal with the fullness is the fact that man is a tabernacle of God. And we began to look at the original design when we look at the law of first mention. We saw that when God wanted to create man, he said, let us make man in our own image. We saw the scripture. And I said, the second thing you must have is that there is a posture you must assume. And I will end here. In five minutes, I think I should. I will just watch this. Then we can see how we can now begin to journey from next week. As God will help us. But let me just share about the posture that man must assume. Having understood that you are God's habitation or house, there is now a posture you must assume in order for the fullness of God to find expression to you. If not, it will be useless. I know I excited your spirit by telling you that you are the habitation of God and you shouted, yeah, 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 yeah. But my brother, <laughs> as shouting as, as good as shouting, there is a kind of posture that if you don't have, it will be a waste. And this were the things I, I, I altered on Sunday. But I altered it in the realm of accessional. So I know that many of you didn't understand what I was saying. And if you read Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, let's look at the posture that Jesus has you. The posture is the posture of a living sacrifice. You can never walk in the fullness if you don't assume the posture of a living sacrifice. Please follow me. I told you that the first understanding you must have is that man is the habitation of God. And the second thing is that there is a posture you must assume if the fullness will be a reality. And that posture is that you must assume the posture of a living sacrifice. So now, we are now looking at the pattern man who carried the fullness, whom the Bible wrote and said in him, the fullness of God dwells. Let's look at the posture he assumed. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also. So this mind was what was in Christ. So he now advises you that let it be in you. Don't just shout. There is a kind of mind you must have. Because there is a kind of posture Jesus has you. And that posture is the posture of a living sacrifice. He was equal with God. But the Bible says he thought it not robbery. So he now said, allow that kind of mind be in you. Who being in the form of God? Yes, you were created in the image and the likeness of God. But did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a living sacrifice, a bound servant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Then Paul was now writing in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. He said, I beseech you by the message of God that you present yourself. I know. There is a kind of acceptance that comes by the finished work of Christ. But there is another one that comes by you. And I say, you will not be a dead sacrifice, you will be a living sacrifice. Can I mutu Allah? Can I say You are dying, you know. He said, that is the only way you can enter the fullness. Because even this night, he can tell some of you to wake up by 12 to pray. Take it, you know, your eyes is heavy, but you are a sacrifice. So he now said, with regards to that sacrifice, this is what you do to that sacrifice. He said, tie it with cords. <laughs> and keep it around the horns of the altar. Psalm 118 verse 27. He said, that sacrifice, tie it with cords. You know, hey God, do you want to enter the fullness? The reason why, he, the reason for that kind of posture is because the how or the technology for entering the fullness is government. Three kinds of government. And you can't yield yourself to government if you are not a living sacrifice. Because you will have your own will, plenty. There are many ambitions you have in your heart. And what the fullness comes to do is to bring the government on you. And that is why you notice, still Jesus was not a living sacrifice. Hope you know, Jesus didn't die for you because he loved you. Because at Gethsemane, he revealed it. When he saw, you know, I was contemplating on marriage. You know, on Saturday we will be having marriage. Can we celebrate God? You see, you are not happy. I say celebrate God. On Saturday, we are having a wedding. Yes. So, in the business of my contemplation, I now found out that Jesus didn't actually die because he loved us. Yes, he loved us. I know that you may think it's heresy. But at the same minute, he said something. He said, Father, is there another way? I beg you. Make I, make I, make I cut out. 
Just allow me. <laughs> then, when the father insisted, the reason why Jesus died was oneness. He considered the oneness he had with the father. And he said, even if I don't love man, for that, because, because if I refuse to die for the first time, the trinity will be in disunity. For the first time, oneness will be destroyed. That is why the greatest power is in oneness. So, you know what that means? God was not telling me something. He said, there are many times when you marry, your wife will be unreasonable. The reason why you will still need that, she is the one at fault, but the reason why you will need down to beg her is not because she is right. It's because of oneness. Because the two shall become one. Anytime Satan does something to your oneness, he has killed you. Because he said a house divided against itself cannot stand. What that means is that any house that assumes oneness, even if the devil is coming from Dubai, Canada, Ile, any any way he can't hit the house. That's why marriage. Oh Jesus, don't worry. On Saturday. <laughs> See, there is something to touch. There is something. He says, God is the Lord and he has given us light. He says, bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are, a, you are a sacrifice. So, because you are now one with him, there are many things you will have to forego. Because that is a posture. He says, let this mind. So, there are many days you will wake up. Shy, the brady will come. Hi. But that day when you wake up, you will know that you are supposed to go on a fast. So, because you are a sacrifice that is dying, it will pain you. It is pain you, it is pain you, yet it is sweet God. It is pain you. <laughs> so, the more it is pain you, the more it is sweet God. And, and... <laughs> See, let's rise on our feet because if I continue, I'm telling you nothing but the truth. There is a journey. The year 2023 is a year of his fullness. So, he is talking about, you know, I told you that the first understanding is the fact that we are the house of God. The second, there is a posture we must assume. Next week, I'm going to be talking about how to walk in the fullness. There is a how. After knowing the fact that you are the tabernacle of God, then you now assume the posture of a living sacrifice. Then you now need to know the how. How then do I walk in the fullness? When you see a man in ever increasing measures of God, there is something he knows how to do. And that is the technology of the fullness. Because the idea is that till we all come. You know, the Holy Ghost just reminded me something. We are going to bring judgment. That judgment prayer has not ended. But the first prayer I want to pray is this. Hey, Father, I know now, I know now, I know now that I am the temple of the living God. I refuse to be molested. I know now. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, anywhere and everywhere Satan is having a hand in my life, in my family, in my career, Satan, get out, get out, get out. I am the temple of the living God. Woo! Everywhere I go, I carry you. I carry you. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. I carry you. Oh, 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 oh,
There is somebody that will come under the anointing now. The Holy Ghost will touch someone. There is someone that will come under the anointing. Holy Spirit of God, help me to identify that person with your power and your grace. Somebody will come under the anointing now. Touch in the name of Jesus. There is someone. The power of God will be upon that person mounting now. There will be a loud sound. There will be a loud sound. Just what I'm seeing. I'm hearing that. I'm hearing that in my spirit. Touch. 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 There is somebody that will be touched. Touch. Touch. Left, right, front, back. There is somebody. He becomes strong. He becomes strong. That is, he becomes strong. He becomes strong. The power of witchcraft is being broken. The Holy Ghost is breaking off the power of witchcraft. The Lord is bringing judgment. The power of witchcraft is being broken. The Lord is bringing judgment. Yeshua Ramazia The Lord is bringing judgment for that person Yeshua Ramazia Ramazia Father, in the name of Jesus, every activity of darkness, activity of the wicked one, I curse it tonight in the name of Jesus. I curse it tonight in the name of Jesus. I bring judgment over the wicked in the name of Jesus. judgment in the name of Jesus over every negative pattern I bring judgment tonight in the name of Jesus over every negative pattern I bring judgment in the name of Jesus by the power of prophecy enter your season of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus by the power of prophecy Enter your season of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. I've had this four times. There are some of you that must rededicate your life back to Christ. I've had this like four times in my spirit. I beg you, run out. You must rededicate your life back to Christ. Please, wherever you are, I beg you in the name of God, come out. Because we are dealing with the matters of judgment. Wherever you are, God bless you. Please come out. You must rededicate. Please, if you are part of those, I have had this like four times with my spirit. Wherever you are, just come on. These are matters of judgment. 
Just go, you talk to the Lord. I'm serious, I've had this. Please, if you are part, join them, please. You must rededicate your life back to life. You know what I'm talking about? I've had this like four times in my spirit. Judgment over the camp of the wicked. Amen. Judgment over the camp of the wicked tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever is responsible for the negative patterns. Judgment tonight in the name of Jesus. Hey, hey. Enter season of sign and wonder in the name of Jesus. Hey, hey. Please say this prayer with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you and I ask you to forgive me. Father, in the name of Jesus, say that, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you and I receive forgiveness for my sins receive me back as a lost sheep of the house of Israel ah, there is somebody in this congregation you are not joining them I'm not joking <laughs> there is somebody please some things are not plain I'm not doing religion say this with me. Say, Father, I come to you and I ask you in the name of Jesus that you will forgive me. Therefore, Father, for your name's sake, which is the name of Jesus, I receive forgiveness for my sins. Today, I reconfess your Lordship over my life. Come Take the steering of my life. Put your law and your government on me. I give myself to you as a living sacrifice. I present myself as a living sacrifice. Satan, take your hands off me. Every legal ground of the devil over my life, over my career, over all that I do, I break it. In the name of Jesus, I break it. I break it. I break it. Every covenant with the pit of hell. Your life will not fulfill negative prophecies. Your life will not fulfill negative prophecies in the name of Jesus. Wow, go. Your sins are forgiven. You have been restored in the name of Jesus. Please go back. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You do not lie. You do not fail. What is that for you? He does in every soul. It can never ever exist. Let's take our seats. You do your knowledge and, and your will. But what you, you say you are done, I just need to align. Because you were not a man that changes your mind. Because I know you will trust in you. Saturday. The Bible says rejoice with those that rejoice. Where is our angle? Where is the Laura? Come outside, let me raise the door. Come outside, the both of you. Is 
present to you. <laughs> yeah. on, on Saturday we are here. So I need you to be part of it. In all ramification, financially, I'm bringing them up here so that just be part of what God is doing in their life. Make sure on Saturday we are here 10 a.m. for their wedding. These ones have been a huge blessing to this ministry. It was myself and him that broke that door. The day we wanted to start, it was me and him. He was hitting it, I was pushing it away. Well, I mean, these people have been a great blessing. I'm serious. So, this is our wedding. As I speak to you, some people have traveled all the way from Adamawa. How many of you know Matthew? Look at our. Yes. These were people that we started with. When he came to this, they said, Kai, the has changed. Because he was our man on the south those days. Kai. It's well. It's a story. And we thank God for the privilege to be part of what God is doing in their life. One of the things I love the more is to cry with people. I like crying with people. Because I know if you cry with people, you will laugh with them. If you drink daggy with people, you will eat chicken with them. And anybody that truly passes through process, watch him, he's a great man. So we will not despise the days of little beginnings. We are going to celebrate it. So we are here on Saturday, 10 a.m. and saying this because if you need to be part of them, after service, please meet them. Say, Kai, the Lord just lay in my heart. Let the Lord be. You know somebody. Somebody, somebody called the bad of God and say, He wants to be sure if God asked him, if God says he should sow money. Then the man of the man of God that asked him that if God tells somebody that he should sow money to your life, will you pray? Will you will you ask, if the person asks you, say that please pray. Are you sure God says I should sow it? What would you tell the person? So I'm saying that in case you hear so money, so money, so money, it's God telling you so much. So much. Can we celebrate them as they go back? For that, I honestly want to celebrate Evangelist Oga. Thank you so much, sir. He is the TS of FCS. Thank you very much, sir. I, I, I've heard about him. I've had encounters with you. God bless you so much, sir. Thank you for coming. I truly honor and appreciate you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I do not take it for granted. God bless you so much. Thank you very much. Can we celebrate him once more? He's a father who has labored. I have had encounters with him. Thank you very much, sir, for taking out time to worship with us. Um, God bless you so much. By God's grace, we'll have you some other time, man. Do the needful. 